Hey, bro. Hey, what do you say about the 23rd song? You said something about it, right? No, it's my shit. I should not have won. What is that? The Lord is my chef, I should yeah. not walk. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to win cash. Now, what does that really mean? I'm going to get some food for three. Psalm chapter 23. Let's get it. Psalm chapter 23, verse 1. Uh -huh. The Lord is my shepherd. It said that the Lord is my shepherd. So, who is he talking to? All nations. The world. First off, this Bible is for who? Let's start there because these words. Let's hold that gift song. Hold up, bro, hold up. Where you going? Let's get it. Psalms 147, 19, uh, and 20. The brother brought out Psalms chapter 23. The churches speak about that every Sunday. But let's break it down. Let's see what it really means. Let's Psalm, start there. Psalm chapter 147, verse 19. Uh-huh. He showed his word unto Jacob. So this Bible, God's words were so unto Jacob. Jacob is who? Jacob. Our uh, uh, um, name was changed to Israel. These men right here, these 12 tribes, are known as Israelites, the people of Israel. Read That's this right. Again. You listen to this? Read this part again for me. He showeth his word unto Jacob. So he, meaning the Lord, show his word, this Bible, unto Jacob, or the Israelites. Read on. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So his laws and judgments was given to one nation of people, the Israelites. That's Hello. right. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Read that part again. He hath not dealt so with any nation. So the Lord does not deal with all nations. That's right. The Lord That's deals right. with one nation. That's, That's right. the nation of Israel. That's right. You that before, sis? Your pastor told you that? That God only deals with one nation of people. Now, we was going over Psalms 23. What do you know about that song? Because all the pastors, they bring that out. You know much about that song? Yes. Ma'am? Okay, let's read this for you. Uh, verse one, Psalms 23, verse one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So it say that the Lord is our shepherd that we should not want or not lack. What does it mean to be a shepherd? Exactly. So uh, uh, um, a shepherd is one that leads, meaning that the sheep shall follow, right? right. So who are the sheep? Matthew uh, 15, 24. Who are the sheep? Who should be following the shepherd? Because the shepherd gives the example, right? That's right. So the sheep must follow that lead, correct? Right. So right. let's see. Who are those sheep? Bring it on. Who should be following the lead or the shepherd? Read that, right. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Uh -huh. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the Lord, that's Christ. Those are red letters right there, right? So when we have red letters, that's talking about what? Jesus Christ is speaking, right? He said that he came not, I mean, he came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right, so once we go back to Psalm 23, it says that the shepherd is one that leads the sheep. Those sheep are the children of Israel. That's right. Are we clear so far? So those sheep are the children of Israel, meaning that we're supposed to follow a certain example, right? Right. Now, hold that. Go to First Peter for me. Chapter two and twenty. Uh, yeah. Chapter two and twenty-one. Let's see the example that the Lord left for His sheep to follow. What's that example? Do you know? Uh-huh. Exactly. So the shepherd was one that left, that leaves an example, right? And the sheep must follow that example, correct? Read that for me. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. Okay. For even hereunto were ye called, uh -huh. because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example. So Christ left us an example that we should follow, right? Read on. That ye should follow his steps. That we should follow his steps. So the sheep shall follow the steps of the shepherd. What's that um, example? Read on. Verse 22. Uh-huh. Who did no sin. Who did what? Who did no sin. So we are supposed to follow that example to do no sin. Now, right. brother, you came back. What is sin? What's in, bro? 
Let's get it for him. <laughs> because he left us an example that we should follow, that we should do no <coughs> sin. Alright? So let's see. What is that? What is sin? Read that. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Uh-huh. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. So sin is the transgression of the law. Read on. For sin is the transgression of the law. You see that? So sin is breaking the law. So let's get, so let's, let's rewind. Christ was the shepherd, is the shepherd, that left an example for us not to sin. That left the example for us not to break God's law. Right? Right. That's what we're trying to teach here. We're trying to teach our people not to break God's law. Right. All right, you get that, bro? Let's go back to Psalms 23. Psalm chapter 23, verse 2. Uh huh. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Uh huh. He leadeth me beside the still waters. So, what does he do? He said that he lead us beside the still waters. All right? The, the Lord will give us peace, the Lord will give us rest. Those green pastures, those still waters mean rest. Are we at rest right now? Why not? The trials and tribulations. The trials and tribulations. So, where did they come from? Why are we going through those things? We stiff neck and rebellion. But what are we? What are we rebellious to? The Most High. The Most High and His laws. All right. You know your nationality. What's your nationality? You are Moorish Israelite. So what does Moorish mean? What does Moorish mean? Nubian. Nubian mean well, basically meaning black, right? Black. That's a color. Your nationality is Israel. Right. right. You steal right. from a man named Israel. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. So that. Israel. Right. Man That's what we are. That's what we are, right? So, you say that we're going through trials and tribulations. Right? And we go through those things. Why? Because we broke his laws? No. Not really. So, you tell me why. Why do we go through our trials and tribulations? Because it's right now. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's hold it. Let's drop that. Real quick. Let's deal with that for a minute. Do the Romans 28. Let me dialogue with you for a minute, bro. Because you said that. I'm with it. You said that it's the white man that brought it all against us, right? Well, they stole the land. They stole the land. Okay. But there must be a reason why that happened. Well, because we broke the law. We broke the. Okay. That's my point. We broke the law. So let's just go through it real fast. First, give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse, verse 48. Because you hit on something. That's written in the Bible. Right. That was prophesied right. to happen to a certain right. nation of people. Right. Okay. Right. Into a land that's not your own. Let's read that. Deuteronomy 28, 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. But first, I'm sorry, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let's make sure we get the entire matter. Let's see who God is speaking to. Okay? Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So Moses was speaking to all Israel. These 12 tribes right here that you see on this sign, this is who Moses was speaking to. Not all nations, but Moses was speaking to a specific group of people. Right? All right. So we are, we are still in that same book, the book of Deuteronomy. Who Moses was speaking to, the nation of Israel. He's still speaking to those same people, right? Deuteronomy 28 and uh, verse 40. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So he's saying, if you break my laws, this is God speaking through Moses. He's saying that if the, the nation of Israel break his laws, read that part again, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee. So because we didn't want to serve the Most High God by um, keeping his laws, he was going to bring our enemies against us. The Lord was. So the white man didn't just wake up one day and say, let me rule over these people. The Lord brought the white man against us. And not just right. the white man, but you have the Arab man right. that's set up right here behind you. In our neighborhood, you have the Chinese man that's selling you chicken wings. What do you know about some wings? 
nothing at all, right? But the Lord brought those people against us because we broke his law. Right? Read that part again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee uh -huh. in hunger. So the things that we want to eat, we have to go serve our enemies for. Read on. And in thirst, what? We want to drink water. We have to go serve our enemies to get those things. Read on. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. The jackets, the pants, the shirt, the hats. We have to go get it from another nation of people. Right. Right? right. right. So what does that let us know? That we have to be totally dependent on another nation of people. Meaning that we are destroyed as a people. We're not a people anymore. Right. And right. we have to get our natural resources to survive from another nation of people, that means that we are not a people. Right. We are we must serve another nation of people. But for some reason, we think that's normal today. Right. We think it is normal to go get uh, um, um, shelter, food, water, things that we need to survive from another people we think is normal. That's Bring it the out. Point mindset. Bring it out. But why did that happen? Because we broke God's law. That's and right. The same laws that the pastor said that I've done away with. We are still um, serving our enemies because we broke God's law. Right? That's right. You, know, you hear me, sis? You listening? You heard that? We must serve our enemies because we break God's laws. Those laws was given to only a specific group of people. Okay? And that's why we are in the state that we're in today. Because we broke God's law. We must serve our enemies, which are these other nations, because we break God's law. Alright? Finish that out. And in nakedness. And in nakedness, the clothes that you must wear, sis, you have to get that from another nation of people. Why? Because we was dis uh, uh, disobedient to the Lord. Read on. And in what of all things? So whatever you want. Whatever you want. Whether it's a driver's license, whether it's schooling, whether it's a car, whatever you can uh, um, even think about. The bus, the transportation behind you. Right. Another nation owns that. Right. Whatever you can think about, get it. You have to get it from another nation of people. And guess what? That new part that you're smoking right there? What is that? That's smoking? You're smoking something, right? Yeah. We'll touch on that in a minute. We'll touch on that. Read that part. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. You see that? This actually happened. Everybody think that this is um a fantasy book, a fairy tale. But what God said, it come, it came to pass. Right. right. Only one nation of people experienced yokes of iron upon their neck. That's right. Your forefathers and foremothers, they had yokes of iron upon their neck. The Bible just prophesied that. God said that if we broke his laws, that we will be on uh, that um, a certain nation or our enemies will put yokes of iron upon our neck. Right. The Bible is the true book. That's right. Read that part again. And in what of all things, uh -huh. and he shall put a yoke of iron up on thy neck until he have destroyed thee. You see that? They say that he, so a particular enemy, put yokes of iron upon thy neck. Good. And who was that? The who? The white man. That's one of your enemies right there, sister. That's one of your enemies right there, bro. You see that? He said that he will put yokes of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So, let me ask you a question. Do you think that we are, are a destroyed people? You don't think so? Why not? We're still here. Yes, we are still here. Yes, physically we're still here. You're right, but I'm talking about spiritually and mentally. Yeah. Are we destroyed? Yes. Let me now. Now, let me say for the lack of knowledge. Yes, we are destroyed for that. But you say that we're not destroyed, right? Now. Yes, we are here. Physically, we are here, but mentally, we are destroyed. Let me prove my point. You're about, you're about to smoke something, right? That is a destroyed mindset. Why do I say that? You said what now? So now, why do you want to smoke trees or just smoke cigarettes? 
Why do you want to do that knowing that that will destroy your body? Why would you do that? That's a that is a destroyed mindset. You knowingly or willingly destroying your body, the, the, uh, the vessel of God. You are willingly doing that. Why? Because, because why? Because that's what you've been taught. Right. That's what I chose. That's what you chose? That's what you chose to do? Oh. Now, you have the media, you have advertisement that has been pumping you with that right. since you've been born. Right? You have the uh, Virginia Slim commercial yeah. making it seem like it's so happy that they are enjoying themselves, destroying their body. You think that you actually uh, make that choice yourself? No, you didn't. You was manipulated. Right? That's Make right. That right. That's what happened. All right. You see what I'm saying? Right. You are willingly destroying your body, and you're thinking that that's okay to do. Now, what you got for us? Second Kings chapter 17, verse 14. Uh -huh. Notwithstanding that they would not hear, but hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. You see that? And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. You see that? Read that last line again because when you're smoking those cigarettes, guess who you follow? You're following those other nations. Right. You're following what they want you to do. You're not following what God said to do. Right. God said, read that last line again. And went and went after the heathen that were round about them. You see that? We are round about the heathen. Do you know who the heathens are? Yeah. Who? The white man. The white man and who else? That's it? All the other nations, the Chinese man, the uh, Arabians. Yes, ma'am. I don't read that. Why not? Because it was inspired by God and by man. Really? Including William Shakespeare. So okay. I don't subscribe to that. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You said that it's, it, it's inspired by God, but written by man. Yes. Including William Shakespeare. Hold that. Go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 40. Let's see if this was, okay, you said it's written by man, but inspired by God. So what does that mean first? Yes, because man had to write this book. Yes, man yeah. had to write the words in the book, but it was inspired by the Most High God. So this was not influenced by man. I think that's what you're getting all the mix up. So which part was distorted? Pretty much the whole damn thing. The whole darn thing was distorted. Yeah, I believe so. So. Was it because we just brought James, out first some... First of all, King James commissioned people to write that. Okay, okay, right. okay, hold on. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, I know this. Because it seems like when we get, uh, when we get correction, then the Bible's wrong. Right. Then the Bible is distorted, right? But the Bible, nobody has to file this Bible. Let's, let's get that straight right now. The Bible has not been defined. Yes, there was men that had to write what the Most High said so we can have reference to it. Right. But these words are not defined. Right. Nothing has changed within these scriptures. Right. Let's prove it. Let's prove it. First Peter chapter 2, talking about the private interpretation. Second, Second Peter, Peter, I'm sorry. Second Peter, chapter 1 and 20. My bad. My bad. Second Peter, listen, chapter, listen, Second Peter, Peter chapter 1. And verse 20, uh -huh. knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So this Bible has no private interpretation, meaning of all, no man said, uh, uh, woke up one day and said, let me write the book of Jeremiah. Let me write the book of Isaiah. No man did that, right? Read on. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. So man did not write this Bible from the willingness of their heart, right? They didn't just wake up. What about it? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. They still, look, these men out here, these women, 
They are still lost. Right there. Right. You see what I'm saying? Explain why I don't read that. Okay. I've read it several times. You read it several, several times, times, right? And you don't yeah, you don't want to read it. Why? Why don't you want to read it? Okay. That's a problem too. That's a problem too. Let's finish that out though. Finish that out. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, uh -huh. but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So these men was moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay? It wasn't them. Men didn't just wake up and just write the Bible. Okay? That was moved by the Holy Spirit. But the issue is people see that men wrote the Bible. Okay? But men did not write with their own will. Let's get that. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 36 real fast. And 17. Let's prove that. Let's prove that. Jeremiah chapter 36 and verse 17. Uh-huh. I think that's what I want. And they asked Baruch, uh -huh. say, tell us now, how didst thou write all these words at his mouth? So, so Baruch was a scribe to the prophet Jeremiah. A scribe is someone who writes down the words of a prophecy or of a prophet. That's what a scribe do. Read that part again for me from the top. And they asked Baruch, say, tell us now, how didst thou write all these words at his mouth? So, they was asking him, how did you write these words that Jeremiah was speaking? Read on. Then Baruch answered them. He pronounced all these words unto me with his mouth. So this is, Baruch is speaking about the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah was moved by the Holy Spirit, like we read in 1 Peter, um, in 2 Peter, and Baruch wrote it down. Read on. And I wrote them with ink in the book. And that's what we have here. We have the words that was written by the prophet Jeremiah uh, through the Spirit of Christ. That's right. That's what we have here. But the reason is, when people don't want to acknowledge the truth or get the correction, now man wrote the book. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.